Hey, welcome. So today we are here to talk about creating the ultimate customer experience using AI. And I'm super excited that you're here. So thank you so much for joining me as we delve into this exciting world of customer experiences and integrating AI to make it even better. So who am I? I am Tequila Jarrett. Listen, I'm a mother of one amazing little boy. He's 10 years old. His name is Mason. Love him dearly. Um, I hold a master's of science in nonprofit management. Um, so I have a background in business that extends for a couple of decades, okay? Um, I built a million-dollar business, which was called We Just Want to Clean Cleaning Contractors Incorporated. I started that business at the ripe young age of, I'm not going to tell you, but I started that business in 2002. And then in 2019, I sold my company for a hefty profit. Um, and I'm really excited to be here to get today and teach you guys about customer experiences. So let's talk about what we are going to discuss today. So we're going to talk about the steps in the customer journey because making sure that you understand what that journey looks like and how to incorporate experiences into each journey is going to be critical, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about how to leverage AI to create this first class customer experience and why it's so important. Don't forget, there are some definite do's and don'ts to use in AI, which we're going to talk about. And I got a bonus for you. Today, we're going to be creating an engagement challenge using AI. The customer experience, if you don't know, is more important than ever before. Even think about the last time that you've gone into a store. You either had a great experience or the experience wasn't so good, right? And the experience that wasn't so good, guess what? You probably did not return to that store or utilize that service again. And that's what we don't want to happen. We want to make sure that our experiences that the customers have with our company is going to do what? Keep them coming back again and often because we know to build a residential cleaning service, guess what you got to do? You got to build it off of recurring clients, right? That's going to be your most lucrative way to build your business and creating an amazing experience is going to help you do just that. Let's look at some what some of the research says, because I don't want you to think that I'm just making this up, okay? Research shows that 80% of customers say a company's experience is just as necessary as its products or services, and this is coming from Salesforce, okay? So when you think about that, what that means to me is that it doesn't matter if I provide amazing service to you, if I clean your house like no other, if the products that I make as far as for my cleaning business are exceptional and they do the job. It doesn't matter if the experience that I have with your company is not first class, okay? That experience can go well past the services, okay? Because sometimes people that say, hey, listen, the experience that I had, the way they treated me, they might not have cleaned as good as I thought, but hey, everything there's room for improvement, right? But that experience is what people talk about. So our goal is to make sure that we increase it as we continue to grow and develop as business owners, as leaders of organizations, okay? What does the experience mean for your business? Again, as we know, a cleaning business has to be built off of recurring clients, people that are coming back again and often. We've all heard the term, it's cheaper to keep them, okay? So what that means is, is that it's going to be a lot more cost effective for your business to retain the clients that you're currently serving than constantly having to go out and look for new clients. So creating this amazing experience is going to do what? It's going to turn those new clients into loyal clients. That's the key. Loyal clients that are coming back. Here we go. Again and often. We're looking to create a community of customer advocates. You want people that are advocating for your business, telling others about these amazing experiences that they're having. Experiences, listen. It's definitely going to help you stand out from the competition because most people are not invested in creating amazing experiences for their customers. And it's going to help you maintain business relationships in difficult times. When I was operating my service and the economy had gotten bad, 
we were in a recession. I remember my clients saying, hey, if I got to cut out going to the beauty shop, if I got to cut out something else that I enjoy doing, I'm definitely not cutting my cleaning service. So those type of relationships are going to keep you during those difficult times when the economy is not on the upswing, but, you know, it's going down. Disposable incomes gets decrease. What does that mean? That means that I got to cut those things that I want, but you want to make sure that the experience that you have created in your businesses are so amazing, first class, outstanding, that I'm going to look for ways that I can make sure that I can continue to receive that outstanding service from you and those great customer experiences. Let's talk about today's customer. We know that, listen, they want end-to-end -end experiences, okay? That's the journey. You got to make sure that you understand the before sale, the during the sale, and the after the sale. That's all part of the journey, end-to-end, -end, from the time that I find out about you to the time that I become a loyal advocate of your business and making sure that the experiences that I have along the way are aligning with the goals and the vision for your business, okay? So if your business is set on building a recurring client base, you got to make sure that you understand the journey and create the best experiences along the entire journey. You want to make sure that you create a strategy where you put into place what these experiences are going to look like along this journey. And I'm going to share with you what this journey looks like. And we're always looking for more feedback so that we can continue to enhance the journey. The journey might not be, or the experience might not be the greatest right now, but continuing to work to enhance that experience is going to do what is going to keep you in business for longer and around longer and keep your clientele constantly growing, okay? But this is where people tend to go wrong. Most people, what they do is they forget about the experience. They forget about investing in the experience. The experience needs to be an actual expense in your business that you are budgeting for because I always need to be looking at ways where I can make sure that my clients understand that we appreciate them, that we you pretty much depend on them, right? To continue to get the service and making sure that your experience is first class. It's what's going to keep those people around. I cannot stress that enough, okay? So we got to remember that we can't forget about the experience. We can market all day long, but after you get that client, what are you doing to make sure that you keep that client? That's the experience, when you successfully implement a customer experience strategy for your business as part of your marketing plan, you're going to have a higher customer satisfaction rate. You're going to have reduced customer churn, meaning that customers aren't going to be shopping around for the best price because your experience is like no other, okay? And then you're going to have increased revenues. Why? Because they're going to be staying. They're going to be coming back again and often. These aren't going to be your shopper type customer. These are the people that are looking for experience as well as quality service. So providing the, both of them is going to keep your customers highly satisfied. But what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to confuse the customer service with the customer experience. They are two totally different things. The customer Service is one aspect of the entire experience, okay? So it doesn't just start and end with the customer service. That's one part of this entire experience. So let's look at some of the differences between the service and the experience. When you interact with a person and you're providing customer service, that's only when someone has an issue, okay? So for example, you go to a restaurant and your meal comes out and the waiter maybe wasn't um, 
as efficient as they normally are. Maybe they weren't attentive as they normally are. So what happens is, is now you complain, right? So the manager, they do what? They then will comp your meal. They then will apologize to see how they can rectify the situation to make it better. So the service, the customer service aspect of it only occurs when there's a problem. The experience occurs through the entire customer journey, which we're going to get there. Your approach, when you're looking at customer service, is reactive. It's happening because there was a problem that I need to solve. When you're looking at experience, it's proactive, meaning that I'm doing it before a problem even occurs. I'm doing it because I want to engage and remain top of mind to my customers, right? So the triggers for the difference between service and experience is a trigger for customer service. Is there something that had to happen for this customer to need to have this amazing customer service experience, right? Something happened, something took place. The experience, the customer experience is a feeling. It's how you make your clients feel about working with you, okay? So I want you to remember, what type of feelings are you putting out about your business so that people always are going to remember you and keep you top of mind? Relationship-wise, one is transactional. Again, it happens when something occurs, okay? Relationship on the customer experience side is going to be experiences that are going to take place throughout the entire journey, okay? It's not a one-time thing. It's not based off of something happening. This is something that we do. Okay, and then the responsibility of it is not going to come from one department It's going to come from the entire company, from the marketing department, from the sales department. It's going to come from um, your emails. It's going to come from the communication that you have with the client. So it's the entire company. It's going to come from when your staff is on site actually delivering that service. So, again, the responsibility of creating an amazing experience is not from the customer service department, it's from the entire company. So making sure that you understand the difference between service and experience. So I know you're probably thinking, okay, listen, listen, listen. What is this whole experience thing? The experience is not defined by you. It's defined by the customers and the interactions that they have with your business throughout this entire journey. So it's like a stranger becoming a friend. Okay, so they found out about your business and now, hey, we are advocate of your business. Now let's look at what that actual experience looks like. The journey. Okay, so here's this journey. So you keep hearing this customer journey, but what does it mean? When I say experiences, I mean their experiences have to be first class from the awareness phase all the way down to advocates when they turn into advocates of your business, okay? So the awareness phase is, hey, I found out about this great cleaning company or somebody referred an amazing cleaning company. Then what happens next? They consider your business. They might be calling other companies to get quotes. They might be finding out about, you know, how they price their jobs, the services that they provide. This is the consideration phase. So this is very important because all of this happens before the sale. Okay. So remember, awareness and consideration are the first two steps in this journey, but they happen before the sale. So what type of experiences are you putting in place uh, before a person even decides to do business with you? Then here comes the purchase and the managing the job. So these are the two things that you're doing during this sale, okay? So during the purchase, what does that experience look like? Do they book with you and then nothing or do they book with you and then they automatically get a thank you for booking these are your next steps this is how to prepare for your cleaning they book with you they get a thank you and then now 
that you're getting ready to do the job, what does that managing a job look like? Do they get a text message to say, hey, we're in route? Do they get a text message to say, hey, we've completed the job? Do they get an email to say, hey, thank you so much for allowing us to provide amazing service? Please leave a review. Do they get an email to ask them um, for their ongoing business? What does that look like? So this is during the sale, okay? And then there is the after the sale. So the part of the customer journey that happens after you've completed the service. There's the loyalty phase and then there's the advocacy phase, right? So when they're in the loyalty phase, it's you teaching them, entertaining them, educating them, providing value to them to get them to come back again and often. And then the advocacy stage is, guess what? Getting them to tell other people about your business. So just like when I got the referral for this amazing company in the first part of this customer journey awareness, now I'm going to turn around and become an advocate of that business and I'm going to do the same thing, which is tell somebody else about the business. And now that new person goes and does what? They start the journey. But remember, you as the business owner, it's your job to make sure Sure that the experience that they have at point one, at point two, at point three, at point four, at point five, at point six is what? First class. That's your job. And the way that you manage all of this, because I know it can sound like a lot, it can be very overwhelming, is that you want to do what? You want to utilize a CRM system. This is your customer relationship management system that's going to allow you to remember those things like when was their last service? When is their birthday? What's their anniversary date for your company? Um, how many of your emails are they opening? Which emails are they responding to or getting the most traction, right? And yes, your small business can benefit from CRM processes today. And I think that is very critical because guess what? You want to make sure that you have this in place before the number of clients makes this CRM absolutely necessary. So I suggest definitely, you know, shopping around, finding out which platform is going to be best for you to utilize for your business and do what? Start to utilize it now while your company is small and growing before it gets too large. Now it's overwhelming. You got 30, 40, 50 clients that you're trying to manage and you have no way of keeping track of what those clients are doing. Okay. So making sure that along this customer journey that you have a CRM in place that's going to allow for an amazing experience. Now, we talked about the journey, okay? You know the steps in the journey, and now we're going to incorporate how to take those steps in that journey, use AI to create an amazing experience. But first, what is this AI thing that everybody keeps talking about? simple. It's machine learning. It's human intelligence processes processes by a machine. Okay. So human intelligence that's processed by a machine. And if used right, AI can make life and operating your business much easier. Okay. But remember, it's still a machine. So just like anything, you got to be able to tell this thing what you want it to do. Okay. Now, how can you use AI in your cleaning business and how can you allow it to help you to create these amazing experiences and in what ways can you to, can AI help you to grow your business? So for one, intelligent scheduling, customer service chat box, personalized cleaning recommendations, data analytics and insights, quality control and inspections, and automated cleaning robots. So these are some of the things that you can utilize within your business where AI can help you, okay? So these are some of the things, again, that AI can be used for in your cleaning business, but I'm going to give you some specifics on how I want you to create this journey um, of amazing experiences. So let's talk about how we're going to leverage AI to create the experience. So I'm going to give you five ways that you can utilize AI to create the experiences, okay? So first, we want to make the interactions easy for our customers, okay? And what does that mean? 
when I'm working with a business or I'm working with a company, I want to make sure that it's easy. It's not overwhelming. The systems aren't too, um, it's, it's not too many moving parts, right? So what you can do to make these interactions easier for your company by using AI is insert chat box or virtual assistant for 24-7 customer support. So you know how you'll go to a website and they say, hey, would you like to chat with somebody? It doesn't matter if it's 10 a.m., or 10 p.m. or four in the morning, right? There's always somebody there to be able to answer your questions. So this is making interactions easy for your company. Inserting those chat box or having that virtual assistant for that 24 seven customer support. Personalized recommendations. So interacting with a customer, um, let's say, your customer has a challenge, right? And you can't figure out how to help them overcome this challenge, but you can go put that challenge into AI, into um, a platform, an AI platform, put the actual challenge in there and ask for recommendations on how to solve this problem, okay? That's going to allow for you to have easier interactions with your customers because you're solving a problem, okay? Proactive notifications. Remember, we talked about being reactive, which is on the customer service side, but being proactive is going to do what? Allow you to stay ahead of the game, create that amazing experience. So you can utilize AI to, let's say, hey, create me a text message um, in 75 words or less for my customers, letting them know that we're on their way to their house. Make it humorous um, and straight to the point. So that's your prompt that you're going to put into the AI platform and it's going to give you back a few options. Now you can utilize those options to turn into text notifications to let your clients know that you're on the way and you're going to upload them to your CRM system. They're going to automatically populate on the days that your clients have cleaning. So you see how all of it works together, being proactive, using a CRM system, having a strategy in place for how you can always remain top of mind and create a first-class experience. These things are going to all take place before the sale, okay? Build a community of customers. Build a customer community. These are the people that's going to be sharing your Facebook posts. These are the people that's going to be referring you to other people. These are the people that are your community, okay? And AI can be used to do what? Help you to develop different forms of engaging edutainment. I like to entertain and educate at the same time, okay? So you can ask AI to create you engaging, entertaining information that's going to educate your audience. You can ask AI to help you build engaging, fun content for your social media. It can help you be relatable and stay on brand, and it's going to help you to be able to build trust. So this is going to happen during and after the sale. Post-purchase engagement. You ever bought something? You ever ordered something? You ever had a service and nobody said anything? They sent you an invoice, you paid the invoice, and that was that? That's not an experience. An experience would be thank you emails or messages, which you can use AI to create amazing messages for your clients. It can be a follow-up call. What do I say on a follow-up call after the services have been rendered? AI can help you to develop a call script for you to call those customers after the service has been rendered. Surveys can help you create the questions for an amazing survey. It can help you write exclusive offers and how you can create a loyalty program for those people that come back again and often. And you can write amazing upsell and cross-selling um, scripts through AI. So all of this is gonna happen after the sale. What is that post purchase engagement look like so for example if you want to upsell so um 
Let's say you got somebody that's doing um, doing monthly cleanings. How can I upsell them or how can I get them to become bi-weekly clients, right? What's the value in getting your home cleaned um, more frequent, right? Or how can I cross sell? Hey, did you know we also clean carpets? Is this something that you would like to add to your service? So this is all going to happen after the sale. So we've sold. Now let's either cross sale or upsell them. We want to make sure that we've sent thank you emails and messages. So it's not just as much as you completing the service, you rendering the service. That's the easy part. Staying engaged is the most important thing that you can do for your business. Educate your audience. And this is fun because this is going to be part of our bonus, okay? But you want to be sending out email newsletters. So monthly newsletters from your company. You want to be sending out infographs and visual content that's going to help you to be able to, again, create amazing experiences. Uh, for example, an infograph you can create. You know how we're seeing all of these TikTok trends about cleaning. Do this to put this in your toilet to make your bathroom smell good. Well, you can do an infograph educating your audience on the damage that those products actually cause to your sewer system or your septic system or actually to the valves in the back of the toilet bowl, right? So what can I do? How can I use AI to create infographs to educate my audience on the um the hazards of using uh different chemicals or storing chemicals inside your toilet bowl how can it rot the the wire i mean the wax rings or the rubber rings right within the toilet the valves like what do these products do to your system so educating your audience is going to be key because Everybody thinks it's so cool. Everybody's like, oh, let me try that. But then they go damage their floors or go damage their countertops. Then it's, <gasps> but if I can educate you and teach you why you shouldn't be doing that, that's a win for your company, right? I'm going to stay around because this company cares about me. Remember, educating your audience is going to be before the sale, during the sale, after the sale, because even during the awareness phase, you're educating them on the value that your company brings. Product usage guides. So these are all ways that you can educate your audience and you can use AI to help you to create amazing experiences. Think about if you got a video tutorial on in between your cleanings, watch this video to show you how to maintain or keep your bathroom clean until we come back. Watch this short video and you create a video tutorial on how to keep your bathroom clean or those clients that you know got a house full of men, right? And you're like, Oh my gosh, my clients just need to know how to, or what to do, you know, at the end of every day, create a cool video on how you can help them to overcome this challenge and educate them. Resolve problems quickly. That's one thing that everybody wants. Nowadays, it's the microwave society, okay? And when I have an issue, I want it resolved immediately, okay? So during it after the sale, you're going to have problems that arise. Being able to resolve them quickly is going to be critical. And a lot of times, we not might not have the solution ourselves to how to resolve that problem, but you can put that problem in AI. And guess what? AI is going to give you some solutions to be able to solve that problem. But there are some tips for us that we want to make sure that we're using when we are creating these experiences in AI. Remember I told you that AI is simply machine learning, okay? Meaning you have to tell the machine the tone and the voice that you want to speak in. So is it humorous? Is it empathetic? Is it conversational, right? So is it persuasive? Are you trying to get them to buy something? So you want to make sure that you're telling the machine how I want this to come across. What is my tone? The more specific your information, the more relevant and valuable the information that's produced will be.
Okay, so you got to be very specific as to what you are telling the machine to do. That way you get the most relevant and valuable information. Then lastly, I want you to always make sure that when you're talking to the machine and telling it what you want it to do, you need to tell the machine who you want it to act like. So I want you to act like a marketing automation specialist because I want to put together a email marketing campaign for new customers. Or I want to put together an email marketing engagement campaign. So I want you to act as a marketing automation specialist. Or I want you to act as a social media specialist as I'm putting together a strategy for my social media campaign, okay? So make sure that when you are using AI, that you are telling the machine how you want it to speak to you. What's the tone in the voice? Making sure that your information that you're putting in is very specific because the more general that you are, the more general of the information that it's going to produce. Tell the machine who you want it to be. Who are you acting like, okay? So make sure that as you're creating these experiences, you know who you want AI to act like. Act like I am a blogging expert and I want you to educate my audience on floor care. That's real general, but you're going to be very specific as to adding in, make it 150 words, um, make sure the tone is very conversational um, and it's for residential cleaning clients only, right? So being very specific in that information is going to be critical. Don't forget that. Now, the do's and the don'ts, okay? AI is your friend. It's not going to take over the world um, because human interaction is so, so very important. But it will make your life much easier and allow you to work more efficiently. So I want you to use it. I also want you to rely on your own creativity. It's a tool, not a substitute. Remember, AI lacks human originality. It's a machine. And if you guys are starting to notice, you're seeing a lot of people using AI and they're doing the don'ts, okay? And the don'ts are don't copy word for word, okay? Your long form content is going to lack flow and cohesiveness that only a human can provide. Remember, it creates a loss of genuine human connection because why? It's a machine and machines are going to act like machines. So make sure that you're reading through everything that it creates, all the copy, because a lot of times the information is repetitive. So you want to go through and you want to make sure that you're editing, that you're reading the content. You want to make sure that it flows, that it's cohesive. And then you want to add a little bit of your originality into it so that the customer knows, hey, this is a person. Think about yourself because we're all consumers. Although we're business owners, we're still consumers. Can you tell the difference when it's AI versus when it's a person? If you use a little bit of your creativity, you won't be able to tell. But if you copy word for word, I guarantee you your consumers, your customers will be able to tell. Please do not assume that AI won't make mistakes. If you're not a good writer, I definitely suggest you utilizing a platform like Grammarly to help you to improve your writing skills, okay? Um, sentence structure, grammar, things of that such. Remember, AI is still a machine. And never rely on AI to build trust for your business, okay? Because it does not know your business. It might know the industry, but it doesn't know ABC cleaning. It might know, again, the cleaning industry, but it does not know your business. So do not rely on it to build the trust. Only you as a human can do that. Now, here comes the fun. It's your turn to create your first 12-part email sequence for your cleaning business. So we're going to create an engaging email sequence to get people 
educated, entertained, more informed, back on our books, signing up for services, turning into advocates, becoming loyal. Okay, so we're going to start right now. And if you think about it, we're doing 12 months because the goal of your CRM, AI, the experience is to automate it. Okay, I want you to make this thing as easy as possible for you and your business. I don't want you to think, oh, I got to write an email every month. No, you don't. You can literally take one day, use AI, create 12 emails, one for every month of the year, and this can be your monthly newsletter. Okay, now let me show you what I mean. So what we're going to do is you're going to choose an AI platform. So you can do OpenAI, ChatGPT, Jasper AI, Copy AI. These are some of the platforms that you can utilize. Then from there, we're going to write our prompt. Remember, we want it to be clear. We want it to be specific. And we need to be telling it what we want it to do. It's a machine. Okay, so here's a prompt for you. Act like an email marketing specialist and draft 12 email subject lines for cleaning service professionals looking to send monthly newsletters to residential cleaning clients. Newsletters are informative, not for sales. Subject lines should reference events, not the month of the year, using a maximum of 50 characters. Okay, now. Here are some of the responses that I received from that prompt. So if we're sending out a monthly newsletter and let's say it is June and our June newsletter, we know summer starts in June. We can say summer organizing tips, declutter and relax. We know fall starts in September. So we can say fall allergen control, breathe easier in your home. So then we have 12 months worth of emails to send out for October. We're going to send out spooky cleanup tips, tricks for a hauntingly clean home, okay? These are engaging. These make me want to open up the email. These make me want to find out, hey, what type of tips do you have for me for prepping my backyard for fun, right? So now that we have our prompts, we have our subject lines. Now we want to create the copy for the email. So again, we want to write the prompt. We want to clearly articulate your request in a way that will guide the AI towards the desired outcome. Remember, AI is simply a machine. And it's improving every day, just like you are, okay? So I want you to draft a monthly engagement email expounding on the topic or title, Outdoor Cleaning Tips, prepping for backyard fun. Here's the response. So AI says, hey, as we gear up for an exciting season of backyard fun and festivities, it's time to give your outdoor space the love and attention it deserves. Say goodbye to the dirt, the grime, the unkept corners, and get ready to enjoy your backyard oasis in all its glory. Now, remember I told you don't think AI doesn't make mistakes because I literally copied and pasted this from the prompt response from AI. But it spelled unkept wrong. So don't think it doesn't make mistakes, okay? But here's the response from that prompt. Now, you're going to have 12 of these because you're going to go through, take the email, and you're going to expound, ask AI to expound on that email. And you might want to say, give me four emails or expound on this email and draft four monthly emails expounding on this topic or title. Take those four and pull out the pieces that you want to add to one email and create the one email. Then from there, we're gonna choose an email marketing platform. So if you haven't gotten a CRM system and you're still trying to figure out this whole CRM thing, you can start with MailChimp. So I want you to take all of your clients and you're gonna either export them if you have them on like an Excel sheet or something like that, and you're going to export them into MailChimp. And then you're going to schedule these emails to be delivered on the first Monday 
or the first day of every month. So now you've created an amazing engagement sequence that's going to go out every month to every person that's on your email list. This is anybody that you provide a service to. Of course, as you create your email list and your business starts to grow, you're going to segment out those different customers to get different emails, but everybody is going to get this engagement sequence, okay? So you want to send these emails out to your entire list on the first Monday of the month or the first day of the month, okay? So that's the challenge that I have for you. Use AI and look at how I can create something to just start engaging with my clients today. July 1st is Saturday. This is an excellent opportunity for you to be able to do what? Start this engagement today. So create your 12 month worth 12 months worth of emails to go out to your clients starting on the first of the month. Okay, guys, listen. So we have learned a lot. We learned what the customer experience actually is. We've learned what that journey looks like and the steps along the way and at what point you should be integrating your customer experiences, okay? And we learned how to utilize AI to enhance those experiences along the journey. And you got a challenge. I want you to create that 12-month sequence of engaging emails, okay? Um, I'm so happy that you guys have joined me. But listen, if you want to work with me, this is how you can work with me. I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have an amazing academy that's like a college or a university for cleaners. It's called the Cleaners Academy. Um, I offer several digital products to help you to grow your business. And then you all know that I'm on social media, okay? So here are my handles. Listen, I'm on Instagram. You can find me at Tequila Jared. I'm on YouTube. And I just started my YouTube channel. So make sure that you guys go over there and subscribe, okay? My YouTube is Tequila Jared or The Million Dollar Cleaning Coach. You can also find me at Facebook at WJWK Consultants. Again, thank you all so much for attending. I hope that the knowledge that was shared here today, it empowers you and it allows you to grow your business and create amazing first-class experiences. Don't forget to stay connected. Let's continue to learn and grow together. You can visit me um, at my site at bit.ly backslash cleaning coach. You can email me at tequila at wjwkconsultants.com. Make sure that you connect with me on Instagram and YouTube. And I look forward to reaching to meeting you all in the future stay blessed have the most amazing day bye thank you for joining